Hey guys, and welcome to an e-scouting video. Um, it's summertime, a lot of you are probably getting ready to go out and scout for your deer, elk, moose tags, whatever it is. Um, I have deer tags and elk tags this year. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the tactics and things that I look for on my digital maps, on my phone, uh, getting ready to hit the mountain. So first things first, I'm using the Scout to Hunt app right here. That is what I will be using for this video. Um, you can download it in the link in the description box. Scout to Hunt, they have an awesome app. I switched over and started using that this year. If you noticed in my shed hunting videos, I was using that a lot to track my tracks, mark my sheds, find access points, whatever. I used the Scout to Hunt app. It's a new app. They are coming out with a lot of different features and updates. The app is very responsive, clear images, and the best thing I love about it is it's free and they do have an upgraded shedicated feature which will get you a few more options and that's a very cheap one-time payment for a yearly membership. So how I'm gonna work this video is I'll browse through my phone, I'm gonna pick a spot and dive in using my phone. I'll share the screen on the other side just so you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at and break down from there all the steps to find a big mule deer this summer. So here's the tricky part of the video, finding a spot to uh, show you guys. Somebody's gonna recognize the spot and I'm sorry if I'm blowing your spot up, your secret spot. Uh, I'm just gonna dive into a random spot, pick, a, pick an area and do exactly like I would do if I was gonna head into that area to scout it and hunt. So first things first, diving into a high country deer hunt or scouting for high country deer. Every mountain range is going to be a little different in the elevation that you're going to be finding the animals in. Usually you're going to be 8,000 plus feet. If you're in Colorado, Wyoming, you can be 11 to 12 when you're finding the deer. And in, if you're in Utah, usually around 9 to nine to 10, you're going to be finding mule deer. So depending on the state, you're going to have different elevations to uh, target and really look at. This particular mountain, what I like to do is dive in, find the highest peaks. So just figure out what elevations you're working with first. Browse the peaks. You can see on a on the topo map. I like to run satellite mode with the with the topo, so that'll show the elevation lines. Um, this particular mountain, you can see the top of the peak is 91 there, and it works up to 10,000 feet in other spots. So with mule deer, what I tend to find is they're not quite at the peaks most of the time. They're usually in that upper two thirds though of the mountain or upper three quarters of the mountain. So if you're at a 10, if your peak is 10,000 feet, I start looking, you know, in that nine to 9,500 feet range. If your peak is 9,000 feet, look from eight to nine, somewhere in there for, for the mule deer. Um, if, if your peaks go all the way up to 12,000, then I would look anywhere from 10 to 11 for those mule deer. Uh, that seems to be the common trend in the summer. Those deer like to get as high as they can, get up in there in the good grass, good new feed. Um, their antlers, they're a little bit sensitive in the summer when they're in the velvet, so they like to get up in the open where they're not bumping those around. I think there's a little bit less bugs. Uh, that tends to be what the mule deer like to do in the summertime. Now, once you figure out your elevation, it's time to start looking for what terrain mule deer like. Summertime, it's big open basins, uh, saddles, ridge lines, and pockets with good feed in them. So as we get up in this basin here, you can see the mountain climbs up just over 10,000 feet. So what I like to do is drop 1,000 feet in elevation on my topo map and start looking for trees and grass in those basins, stuff that those mule deer are going to want to be feeding in. In the summer, they're out feeding super early in the middle of the night into the early morning, right as sunrise comes, you'll tend to see those mule deer start to head for cover. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find those transition points where you have green grass basins, good feed, and then where they are going from there to go to their cover for the day to bed under trees. So whether that's a small strip of trees, like you can see here in this basin, there's some, a big basin, big open basin, and then over to the right, they have some jack pines, and then few taller pine tree patches that they can go into for the day. Deer don't always go to the same spots either. So you're going to want to find a couple key points. So maybe some days they're going to that more open high pine bedding in the rocks, but then other days they might want to go bury themselves in a north slope or 
off in a, in a more shaded area. So what I look for there is also saddles, good saddles where the animals can transition easily side hill from a basin into a north facing slope like you can see here. If those deer continued feeding through those pine trees, they could wrap up high over the spine of this ridge here. And then they have a nice north slope of pines that they can go bed in, stay out of the sun for the day. A key tip that I have really used over the years is it depends on the map and how well it's loaded, how well your service is. But if you can zoom in close enough, you can find actually game trails cutting through certain areas in rocks or grass if they're getting used frequently and uh, throughout the years. When you're going into an area, especially a new area, it can be easy to forget also as you're moving around scouting on these maps. So it's nice to drop pins. So what you can do on this Scout to Hunt app is I've zoomed in here on this north slope. Like I was saying, I think it looks like a good bedding area. So all you have to do is hold down on the screen and all of your little icons are gonna pop up here that you can name that, name that pin essentially and designate it. Um, so this one, I'll probably give it the bed feature. And now you can see that saved as bed. You could tap on that same one. It'll give you the coordinates. You can give it a separate name, bedding area. And from that bedding area, as we wrap around, you can see right here through these rock slides as I zoom in at 9,600 feet right here. Right above there, you can see a grassy patch and right below there, you can see a pine tree patch. Those would be great spots. I think animals would transition from there and you can almost see some game trails right there in the middle of the screen where animals are crossing from that to come around through these pine trees here this little north slope and then over onto their open face to feed and what you're going to notice is there's actually a lot more grass this is what helps about e-scouting and actually going and putting uh, boots on the ground there's actually a lot of grass that grows through these rocks so just because you're seeing what looks like rock on your map does not mean that there's not vegetation there and that's actually what mule deer love there's a lot of good lush grass that grows in those rocks in the summertime so right here there's a good a nice saddle that i think a lot of animals would, would be using and crossing through so i'm going to hold my finger down again and i'm going to give it the icon for trail right there so now from there we have a bedding, a crossing. Now let's look for a good area where these animals could feed at. At the top of those pine trees where I said those animals could bed, they could come up right here around just over 9,900 feet and drop down into this basin where there's also some more vegetation in those trees. So that up here could be another crossing that animals could take. Like I said, they don't always take the same ones every day, especially a smart buck. He has a little bit of a rotation he'll be on. Uh, and obviously the harder they are to pattern, the harder they are to kill. So now over here on the feeding, feeding side, you can see in between as I zoom in, there's little green patches in between these trees. Um, that's what the deer are really gonna be feeding in. Uh, this looks like a, a great spot actually. What I love about this area is as I go more over, the deer can side hill real easily. This basin opens up into a giant area of just vegetation. And honestly, there could be two different groups of deer. This basin is big enough from the looks of it as I zoom out here that there could be deer in the pocket I just mentioned and in the pocket that we're looking at here. So this is another one, good one. I'm going to drop a pin. I'm going to mark this one mule deer because that's most likely where you're gonna catch a buck walking around when you're out glassing in the morning. So now the best strategy is to look on the maps and find how you are going to glass and access those areas. What I like to do when I glass is get on a high central location where I can see everything. Um, and the best thing you can do is use your map to do that because it sucks to hike up to a ridge and then notice, oh, I can't even see over there or I can't see over there. Best thing to do is have that mapped out so you know when you get to your glassing point that morning, you're gonna be able to see that entire basin. So let's look here and try to find a good central point that's going to give us a good view of both that crossing and that high pocket. All right, so we've got the highest point marked with the deer. 
Then as we move down, we've got the bedding area and we have the crossing down here where some of the deer could be crossing down lower. So I want a visual at that crossing. I want a visual where they could cross up high at that bedding area and also where they could be feeding way up high on that basin. So looking at the map here, a ridge line comes down off of that main one where they could be bedding. And right here starts to form a little peak. You can see how it's more rounded uh, with your topography elevation lines. They're starting to make more circles. That's gonna be meaning the mountain's coming up to a peak right there. You might find a peak or a point that you can sit at, but there's too many trees on it. So when you sit down, you can't even see where you're really looking. So you wanna make sure that it has some open spots where you could sit down and opening really glass, glass and get the best uh, vantage. This spot looks like it has openings on both sides. So you might have to move and kind of move 20 yards throughout the morning as you're glassing from pocket to pocket, but you want to move much and you'll have a pretty good field of view. So I'm going to mark this one. We're going to call this glassing it's a little spotting scope right there. And just out of curiosity, let's see how far away we'll be looking from the glassing point to the other pockets where we think the deer might be. So to access the measure tool, all you want to do is tap the Scout to Hunt logo in the bottom of the screen. And what you're going to hit is the measure tool at the top, line, and then you use your little scope icon, hit plus, and then drag across the screen to wherever you want to measure to. Let's just go all the way up to the top of this basin. Push plus again, that saves it. One thing is they are coming out with 3D, I've heard. Uh, they're not there yet though, so right now it is just a 2D map, but um, one pretty sweet feature they have to save your butt is they have a slopes feature, which you can look at north slopes, west slopes, east slopes, uh, whatever. So you just go to your layers icon, hit slopes. If you hold it down, you can toggle between which ones you want highlighted. You want all of them highlighted. They're color coordinated. So west slopes purple, north slopes red, east slopes yellow, south slopes blue, turquoise. So say I want north slopes to be highlighted is all. Red will be north slopes. Now, anywhere that's north facing and you're having a hard time on the map, you can kind of say, okay, yeah, I was looking at a north slope or maybe no, I wasn't. And they do have the compass on the side of the screen you can always go off of, but sometimes the color might be easier for you. So right here where we said this would be a north slope where they're bedded, you can see it's marked red. It is a north slope. So now we kind of have dived into that one particular spot. I went over glassing points, look what to look for. Let's just bounce to a couple other areas uh, randomly, use the same strategies just to kind of reiterate and go over all those points again in a couple different spots to give you a good idea of how easy it is to pinpoint, narrow in and come up with a game plan how to target and find these mule deer. All right, so this looks like a pretty good little spot. We've got cliffs, we've got pine trees, green grass, basins, everything mule deer like in the high country. So first thing we're going to do, look for elevation. What's our highest points on that mountain? And uh, what is the vegetation looking like on that mountain? Is it cliffs and just rock? Is it grass basin cliffs with grass in those rocks? We just want to narrow it down, see what we're working with. Zooming in looks like 10,000, uh, just under 11,000 feet is the elevation we're working with here and we've got cliffs on this north slope and then we've got a nice beautiful looking basin triangle shape they i don't know why big bucks love big triangle faces uh they're usually steep like i said this is going right up to just over 10,000 feet we've got little strips of pine trees that those deer can bed in right up there where they're feeding or if they want to they can side hill wrap around it looks like here and you can even see some trails if you zoom in on these maps. Like I said, right there in the middle of the screen, you can see those lines. Those are game trails crossing where animals are going from this basin to that's upper in the upper part of the screen down into these thicker pines here where they can bed and have more cover. But you can see right there a big game trail crossing through the rocks. Another one up here. 
and that's taking them up into this nice hillside here which is right in the mid 9000s up to 10,000 feet just like I said usually you want to drop a thousand feet from whatever that highest peak is and you're going to be finding mule deer in the summertime from the looks of it with the topography lines it makes a little basin itself so it could be hard to glass from certain angles right now north is to my left so you're going to want to go straight west so you have the best look at that whole entire bowl because if you're too far one way or the other you're going to be looking from a side view and trees or uh, different lay the layout of the land could get in the way and not give you the best uh, glassing angle so what i would want to do is work straight west from the looks of it this is a pretty flat ridge line here too so you could even get closer be up on this ridge uh, say i drop a pin here Say this is glassing. And a line distance. Let's measure tool. Drop our pin. From there, up to where the deer are, right around a mile. So that's a pretty good distance to glass, but like I said, if you have a good scope, you can make out what an animal is from that distance. And that's going to give you a great angle to see that entire basin up there. Make sure you're not missing anything because I could tell you right now, looking at these pine trees over on the right, that is perfect for mule deer to be feeding and then drop down into those pines and bed. Uh, they have quick escape routes through the cliffs this way where they can run up and over the top. Looks like they even have some water right here if you zoom in tight enough you can see some water this is a mule deer sanctuary high tucked away uh, water plenty of feed i hope this helped you guys going into your scouting season maybe give you a few tips and an idea how to utilize your phone before you head up in the mountain and put your boots on the ground so again just to kind of recap elevation is the biggest thing to initially look for when you're entering a new area find what your highest peak is what type of mountain you're dealing with and then drop a thousand feet from there and work that it and work that elevation that's going to be where the heart of the mule deer are typically again this isn't for everything there seems to be a common theme with mule deer and it's they go to the high country so find that elevation drop a thousand feet start looking for pine tree patches they can bed saddles they can cross through pinch points where um, they're going to be going from feeding to bedding and then find yourself a high point classing area usually within a mile of those areas those deer are going to be crossing then go have a good time best thing you can do is just spend time behind the glass really you can you can look at maps all you want and it's fun but the best thing you're going to do and the most you're going to learn is from time in the field uh, so I thought I would share them with you guys, give you a few of those tips, and hopefully help you out on your next adventure. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video.